Uh, with renewed circulation in the audience, um, I'd like now, please, to introduce Pat Mitchell, distinguished broadcaster, president and CEO of the Museum of Television and Radio, who will now introduce Nobel laureate and longtime friend of the forum, Mohammed Yunus, to talk about his experience of how social innovation can create large-scale social change. It's my responsibility this afternoon, as well as privilege, to be your surrogate in this conversation and facilitate one with the perhaps most respected, revered, uh, and celebrated world citizen, as well as social entrepreneur. Professor Yunus and I assume that most of you know the almost mythical story about the founding of Grameen Bank and, and its impact on the world. Um, so with his indulgence, I'm going to tell the story as if we were proposing it as a Hollywood movie to a movie studio, perhaps participant productions. <laughs> The story begins with, uh, we'll call the movie, by the way, Global Hero. Is that acceptable? <laughs> Our story begins with a young economics professor at the University of Chittagong. He observes in this rural part of Bangladesh where he is teaching that the poor are limited, only have one option when it comes to getting the money they need to get the materials they create to sell to feed their families. Onerous interest rates from money lenders. He comes up with the innovative idea of microloans, and he makes them himself. $27 to 42 people who immediately repay him, and the idea takes shape. So he does more. But he faces challenges, our global hero. The challenges of the banks who say, will not lend to the poorest of the poor without collateral, so he puts up his own. Challenges from religious and cultural taboos that discourage loaning to women. Women become the largest group of his customers, as well as the ones who repay the best. So soon the bank issues another challenge. Go to a region where you're not well known and not a local hero. They send him to Tangal, where there just happens to be a guerrilla war going. Every movie needs an action sequence. <laughs> There, he hires the guerrilla fighters and convinces them to put down their guns and make microloans. Now the moment is clear. He must open an entirely new kind of bank, an independent bank, the Grameen Bank, that belongs to its depositors and its borrowers. For all of this, the Grameen Bank model is exported around the world. Our local hero becomes a global hero. And all of his accomplishments acknowledged with the highest honor of the Nobel Peace Prize. And as the ceremony begins and the credits begin to roll at the end of the film, the close-up goes to our global hero's face, and we see that he is way past the ceremony, focused in his vision, as he always has been, on the future, and thinking of the next idea for the next social innovation. Professor Mohammed Yunus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I would certainly buy that movie. Uh, that's um, what I was going to ask. <laughs> well, we'll ask Jeff later. Um, but, it, but in fact, the, the movie may end. Um, but the story has only really just begun with you, Professor Thank Yunus. You. So what is the next great social innovation that you see to address some pressing social need? Well, as you uh, get involved in such things, uh, one thing leads to another. Hardly you realize that you're moving into something else, but you soon find out. Uh, one, we realize that as we go on, uh, gradually we're reaching out to more and more families, poor families in Bangladesh, and many NGOs are picking it up. So they widen the whole the outreach of the poor people. Today in Bangladesh, we reach 80% uh, of all the poor families with microcredit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is most intensively done microcredit in the world. Uh, so our goal collectively is uh, to reach 100% of all the families. 
So we are hoping by 2010, we'll be reaching out 100% of the poor families. But as you do, as you move from uh, stage one to stage two and rich and uh, have everybody has a out, uh, reached out with microcredit, uh, you wonder what does it do to people? And how do we enhance that uh, speed to pick up, to go to the next stage of their life? One area that we concentrated uh, uh, was the ch uh, education of the children. So we wanted to make sure the children go to school because the parents uh, are illiterate. The woman who joined Grameen Bank, she's illiterate, her husband is illiterate, their parents are illiterate, and this is illiteracy uh, repeated uh, endlessly in the history. So our objective is if we are going to uh, see a change, maybe we should encourage them to send their children to school. And we did, and we succeeded in very early years making sure all the children are in school. And we are very happy. Then we noticed that some of the children coming from these illiterate families are topping the classes wherever they are. So that we thought needs to be celebrated, that coming for the first time to school, not only they are in school, but they are in the top of the class. So we introduced uh, scholarships. So Grameen Bank gives around 40,000 scholarships each year to such students. And then now we see that many of these students are in higher education. Uh, going to medical schools, going to engineering schools, going to universities, everywhere. Uh, so about 12 years, 13 years back, we noticed that and kind of excited us. We introduced education loans so that they can continue with education. Many of them are uh, now becoming doctors, engineers, and some of them got their PhDs. Some of them probably end up in Oxford very soon, I hope. <laughs> it's possible because they are doing very well. Uh, and that leads me to see that uh, a new generation be created in that. So it's not simply giving loans to uh, women, uh, poor women, to improve their income, which is very important, but also see that next generation that comes out is amazingly different from, dramatically different mm -hmm. in their families. So this is one of the areas that we are concentrating and see. And what do they do after they finish their education? Uh, one, we try to inculcate in them uh, like we said, that oh, they, sometimes they ask, can we find jobs after we finish our education? What do we do? So we said, well, let's do it this way. You are Grameen Bank children, so your ideas should be different than other children. Uh, you, you take a pledge. Every morning you wake up and look at yourself and kind of repeat the pledge. And the pledge is very simple. I shall never seek any job from anybody. I shall create jobs. So that's your job, to create jobs, not seeking jobs. So, and we make it very clear. Look, other children don't have their, their mothers don't have the, uh, don't own a bank. Your mother owns a bank. That's a Grameen Bank. So you are different. <laughs> yes. So you think differently. Uh, money is not your problem. Idea is your problem. You think about what you're going to do with money because bank has uh, endless money. So it, no matter how big the pr project is, you can do that. So this is the new generation which is coming out, and the bank is preparing for the next, next level of clients who would be the young people with education coming from these illiterate families and setting up not only changing their life, changing the whole national life. Because when you have seven million clients, seven million borrowers, imagine if they have two children per family, you have 14 million children coming up to take over uh, whatever businesses and so on. So this is one area we see very significant that can make a, a big difference in the kind of uh, what we say microcredit uh, can do to create that uh, new generation uh, in the society. The other one that we uh, learned along the way that uh, uh, the lessons from our work is not only people change their life uh, they uh, take little loans, own a cow, own a few ch uh, chicken, and do little businesses on the, uh, with the money. Also, this is their ownership. They start owning assets. For the first time, women in Bangladesh, poor women in Bangladesh can clearly say, I own this. This is my belonging. Uh, so that ownership is very important. At the same time, they own the whole bank. So not only they own the little uh, uh, chickens, all the cattle, they own the whole bank. It's a huge big bank. It's not a simple bank. It's, it has uh, 24,000 staff. Uh, it has uh, 
uh, it lends out uh, half a billion dollar a year. And that bank belongs to her. She is the owner. So she takes a lot of pride. And also, she knows that she can uh, develop savings. And we introduce pension fund. For the first time, people heard, what is pension? They don't know what is pension. So we said, this is for your old age, so that you don't have to worry who will be taking care of you and so on. All you do, put little savings, same size, each week. Each week. And over a period of 10 years, whatever you saved, bank will match you with that money, which works out as about 12% interest. That's what we do. But for them, it's an amazing thought that if I put this money along the way and I get double that money, every single borrower of Grameen Bank has their pension fund in place, and that becomes an enormous deposit for the bank itself, and they run the bank, we run the bank with the money they put in the deposits at a pension fund. So several of those things like insurance and other things are included in that. So this is a totality of that. And the creativity that you demonstrate leads us to one more question, which uh, uh, leads to a very basic uh, new uh, direction for us. It's the creativity that all these women demonstrate. These are illiterate women, but uh, in the beginning very shaky, very afraid to take money. But after they have gone through it, now the enormous agility, amount, enormous amount of ingenuity they bring in the picture. Uh, so kind of uh, make us think that uh, poverty is not inside of them. Poverty was imposed on them. It's an artificial imposition on people. So now we question what is poverty. Poverty is not created by poor people. Poverty is imposed on, on people who turn themselves into po poor people. Uh, so w what is the cause of poverty? The answer that we give is uh, poverty is caused by the institutions that we build. And I give the example of banking institutions, why banks kind of neglect or ignore a whole uh, uh, community of people in the world, two thirds of the population of the world don't, uh, are not eligible to borrow money from a conventional bank. So institutions like banking or many other such institutions are at fault. Another one that we said, uh, it, it's also fault of the concepts, the kind of concepts that we have built over years. Uh, we, the concept that we put in our economic theory, for example, and one such the, uh, concept is the concept of business. And the concept of business, the way we defined in our economic theory is, is uh, to make money. That's the only mission of business, business to make money, profit maximization. That's the goal, that's, that's what you do. And that's the only kind of business admitted within the framework of economics. And I feel that's a shame to uh, uh, depict human being in such a single dimension uh, character. Uh, single dimensional character that all they do in business is make money. To me, human being is so much bigger an entity, much bigger a creation, just to be only one dimensional entity. It's a multi dimensional entity. But because we created the theory, uh, hoping that this is what describes human being, uh, now it became almost like something that human being has to fit into the theory. So instead of uh, theory imitating the reality, now, uh, reality is trying to imitate the theory because every one of us is trying to push ourselves into that little box. So are we doing the right thing? Are we maximizing our profit? So I think we need to do justice to human being. This is not quite just the way we have depicted in that box. We should create another kind of uh, business, business to do good to people, because that's what, that's what instinct each human being has. Uh, human beings not only wants to be happy with the money they make, also want to be happy with the contribution they make, how they touch other people's lives, how they change the world, help the world to change. Uh, and that's what the young people always look forward to. They, they want to play, play a role or a, to leave a signature on this planet. This is where I was, uh, like we do when we go to the picnic. We put our name on the trees. <laughs> so each human being would like to do something like that, put their name on the tree. Uh, but there's an opportunity within the framework of uh, what we conceptualize with the economic theory. So this business, business should do good, uh, let's call it social business. The social business would uh, kind of release that energy in the human being, which we cannot release now. That can change the whole structure of the economy. I'm not saying somebody has to uh, 
uh, force anybody to go and do social business, but it is inside of every human being. Given opportunity, given the institutional setup, they will go and do it. Uh, at the beginning, people say, well, our people are not as crazy as that. They will not kind of go and do something for other people. They are very selfish. I said, that's what the theory makes it look like. We are not selfish. We are everything. We are together, all kinds of feelings we have, but we are only allowed to release our self-interest only, the selfish interest only. Uh, going out is something inside of us. So why don't we create those institutions? While I'm talking about that, I uh, met uh, the chairman of uh, Danone, Danone Foods, uh, in one of my visits to Paris. And I proposed to him, why don't we create a Grameen Danone company in Bangladesh? He said, what, what will it do? I said, it will produce yogurt. Like you said, your yogurt is one of the best in the world and so on. So why don't we have that yogurt? So he said, OK, uh, let's do it. So he shook hands. I said, but this will be a social business. I said, well, he asked me, what is the social business? I said, social business is something uh, which will do good to people. Uh, you will not get any dividend out of it. You can take your money back, investment money back, but no dividend whatsoever. So it will run by its own money. It will continue. Your ownership will be there. You continue that. That this yogurt will be made in such a way uh, that it will address the malnourished children to regain their uh, mm. nutrition. nutrition. So you put all the ingredients, uh, micronutrients, into the yogurt and sell it to the poor children in Bangladesh. And they will regain their health. He shook hands again. He said, I agree. So this, I thought he didn't understand my English. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Professor Yanis, yeah. you, you made a very um, brave decision, first of all, in, in setting up a bank, you know, but with an entirely different structure. And I know that um, what Charles Handy spoke about and others, this attempt to marry capitalistic ideas or the machines of capitalism that work well or should work better, like banks, sure. with social entrepreneurial ideas, which clearly micro lending and micro loans and micro credit changed uh, the banking industry. You made the, the decision recently to diversify into all these other, from yogurt to Grameen phone, Grameen internet, Grameen textile. Talk to us about that. Yeah, as I said, one thing leads to another. Uh, so this is one led to a chance meeting and I could put it in a concrete shape. This was, a, I, this was an idea which was going out in my mind that we can create social business. We did create social business, but at our own initiative. People didn't notice it. The moment we did it with Danone, everybody said, what, Danone did it? Uh, are they crazy? I said, no, they're not crazy. <coughs> they're just business people. They're uh, uh, as business as anybody else. But they also want to do such things. And it touched the biz uh, employees of Danone so much. They want to do more of, more of Grameen Danone. And the shareholders of Grameen uh, Danone now want to create a fund. Because I said it, you can create a social business fund. They now have just created a social business fund and listed it in the Paris stock market. And this is one stock where it is declared you will not get any dividend out of it. So now it's up to people whether they would like to buy the shares, uh, buy the uh, shares of this uh, or invest in this uh, social business fund, right. up to them. So people should be given choices. That's the whole idea on this social business. We created other social businesses like I Care Hospital, uh, where those who can afford, those who have money, they pay the full price, market price, and the hospital makes money. And then those who cannot afford, they get this heavy discounts, or people extremely poor, they get it almost free, pay one dollar or one pound or whatever for uh, getting their cataract operation done and so on. But the hospital as a whole doesn't lose money. That, that's the whole idea. So people ask me whether uh, uh, you can distinguish who should pay the full price, whether who pay, should pay the uh, discounted price, and who should get free. I said, we do it every t all, the day, all the time, everywhere. You don't notice it. For senior citizens, you have a discount, you have free uh, in many countries. For uh, children, you have a special rate for most of the places. You do it all the time. So why can't you use it uh, on the basis of income and other things? And all you need to do is to structure it in such a way so that you don't need any extra outside help. You do it inside, and you cover all your costs. Since there's no uh, dividend to be paid out, it remains within you, and you can do that. 
So this is on the social business side. Of course, the mobile phone and uh, uh, solar energy and other things came uh, from different uh, angles. But do you think it's somewhat easier for you to convince the Danons of the world, our other businesses, that this is not only a good idea because of the social need it addresses, but also it will make a profit? Because you created a bank that has turned a profit since Absolutely. the day it they opened it its stores. They take it very seriously. I talked to several chambers. I was uh, on a tour. Uh, I was visiting India in Delhi and in Mumbai. And the uh, Chamber of Commerce wanted to meet me, have a big uh, uh, meeting, dinner, and so on. So in the dinner, I discussed about social business. Uh, after the dinner, many of those top business people in India just came forward and said, I would like to do some social business. How do I go about it? I said, here is my card. <laughs> Let's go. And have they been knocking at the door? They are knocking at the door. We, as a result, we have to create a secretariat for prom uh, sorting out all the social businesses. There are many people who said, one woman in uh, Mumbai, she came up, she said, look, I have in inherited a big fortune. And it's a big business. And I have so much money, I don't know what I should do with it. And your idea gave me a big idea. I would like to invest in a social business. That's what I should do, because I don't need all this money. So there are a lot of such people out of uh, concern, out of uh, patience, uh, out of uh, uh, the interest to solve the problem. You can solve your neighborhood problem. You don't have to go solve global problem. You can design a business to address that. We can uh, design a social business to get unemployed people uh, back into employment. That is a social business. You don't lose money, but you help people to get into business. Or you can uh, take a street from, uh, children from the street and put it in the world, That's, or put it into education. That could be a social business too. Or bringing uh, safe drinking water for people. That's one missing item in many, many communities. Healthcare in general is a big, interesting program for social business. So we create social business funds and also can have a competition competition for anybody who would like to design a social business and given the criteria uh, in the advertisement and then submit. So out of these hundreds or thousands of ideas, designs that you'll get, you sift through it, uh, get a jury board to decide and take the top three. And then social venture capital can come in and invest money. Let's go and do it. Let's find out. If some of them work out, you have addressed many serious problems in the world. You don't have to wait for other people to do it. You do it yourself. Citizens can solve problems. All you have to do, design it in a different way. Our theoretical structure has to, has to uh, accommodate those facilities. And I keep reminding about the capitalism. I said have, capitalism is in reality is a half-told story. So you need to comp make it a logically complete uh, structure. And you have to have the full human being into it rather than have done human being, which only makes money. Uh, so you have to en enlarge it so that all human uh, aspects can be accommodated within that theory of economics. Well, it's clear to see why you're such an inspiration to social entrepreneurs all over the world, and particularly the ones in this room. But for those who don't have quite your good fortune in convincing these businesses um, that these are good things to do and that they can, in fact, uh, make a profit, do well while, while doing good. Or, um, what do you say to them? What are the two or three messages that must be made um, and made well in order to convince business to become social business? Uh, see, I was not thinking your way. <laughs> I don't have to convince anybody. <laughs> My feeling is they're already convinced. Just don't have the scope. So I was starting from that point of view. The moment I w we lift the screen, lots of people are coming in. So I don't have to go and convince people. Uh, all I have to do is to explain what it is and say, oh my God, this is what I wanted. That's all. Uh, when I was speaking to groups of business people, I was not telling them anything to do. I'm simply telling what I do. They're the one who say, hey, I want to do it. Can you I have, do You it? have convinced them by, because, by role model. It, because it made sense to them. Uh, right away, they, they saw the reason for it. Now, if you are a businessman, businesswoman, and I'm a businessman, and you did the social business, 
And you are talking everywhere about your social business, how excited you are. You don't talk about your main business, which you make a lot of money from. Mm. You're always talking about the tiny little social business yeah. you do. It, and I get very upset that you talk about it. I can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, surely there's some bragging rights that, so, uh, that Dan I, I, gives you. I, I want to do better than you do. Uh, I come up with a better design, better outreach, right. and I showed all my business talent, and then I say, look at this one. I would like to take you to sh show my business that I do. So that's why people take pride, because these are business people. They are talented, creative people. They already succeeded in business. They would like to bring the talent into another area, another area of where the government is struggling with those problems, while other people are struggling with that problem. I can solve it beautifully within this framework. And I show how this can be done. And then the competition begins. And you are doing the same thing. You do the uh, safe water, I do the safe water. Mm -hmm. But my safe water comes with a brilliant idea. The container that I give in the safe water delivery, that's also eatable content. So I don't throw away my uh, container. So I, uh, it, has a, it has either beautiful spice content or something, you throw it into your, whatever you're cooking, it tastes better. What you did, only your container went into your cooking. So this possible. So each one is improving the idea what, uh, what it needs to be done. Uh, uh, and everybody uh, comes into competition of ideas, competition of creativity. So this creates another aspect. The, another, you mentioned about the mobile phone, I just want to add, uh, I, very strongly I felt all along that uh, information technology is going to change the world. It, it is, it is a changing the world. eBay is a good example right here. Uh, but it is not coming their poor people's way. It's coming to the people who are already established in their businesses and so on. And everything is designed their way. Because you want it to, be, uh, to have the gadget right on your desk, so you have the desktop. Uh, then you are saying, oh, if I had a, something that I can carry around and do my job on the lab, that would be great. Then they designed you the laptop. And you say, oh, I should keep it in my hand. It's a pump top. Everything, as you wished. But nobody is uh, looking for with the poor women in Bangladesh or Uruguay or Bolivia, they are looking for. Nobody looks at that. They don't think that is, quote unquote, their market. So they are looking at one market and they try to please them. Designers are neutral. Whatever you ask them, they will design for you. So they are asking for designing for somebody like you, me, and everybody else. They are designing for that, not for that woman. If we had that picture of this poor woman on the desk of a designer, and challenged him or her that design something that she needs and she can work with. They will come up with brilliant, brilliant ideas. I said, I can give you one idea what they could do, or if I'm a designer, what I will design. I'll design a gadget, not like a laptop, not like a desktop, uh, not like iPod. I will design a Aladdin's lamp. Aladdin's lamp, ah, lamp that yes. uh, the story. <laughs> and yes. you rub it and a genie comes out of it. <laughs> so this poor woman knows the story of Aladdin, so yes. she got the lamp, yes. so she rubs it, and the digital genie comes out. I like this idea, and I'm sure there's someone in our audience who will put up the money yeah, for it sure as well. Do. <laughs> so then the Wait. genie will say, what can I do for you, ma'am? <laughs> then she will complain, she will tell what she needs along, and so yes. on, and they will get connected to I, that. I think and, this is the next Grameen business. Absolutely, <laughs> Grameen eBay will be, she, the, Grameen, the genie will bring, bring the Grameen eBay. Grameen solve genie. Her, how to sell her product. Grameen genie, we heard it yeah. here first. <laughs> Professor Yunus, we would love to continue this Thank conversation. Uh, it's been so instructive, and surely we all have the ideas, yeah. uh, as well as the fact that you have proven um, that what you believe in your heart, you do make come true. Not Thank just for yourself, but for the country and the world. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you. You, you, are the, you are the CEO of the museum. I'm looking for another museum. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Poverty museum. <laughs> Thank you.